Welcome to my presentation on cyberbullying and sexting. Cyberbullying is bullying that takes place using electronic technology. Examples of cyberbullying would be sending mean text messages or emails, spreading rumors by emails or posting them on social networking sites. It can also include embarrassing pictures, videos, websites, or even using fake profiles. Warning signs. Um, this is you might see students have frequent headaches or stomach aches or feeling sick or maybe even faking an illness if they are being bullied. It also might include changes in eating habits like skipping meals or binging, coming home hungry because they're skipping lunch. It could include um, sleeping difficulties or nightmares, declining grades or loss of interest in school. It can also include sudden loss of friends or avoidance of social situations. Feelings of helplessness or decreased self-esteem are also warning signs. Um, you can also see self-destructive behavior such as running away from home, harming yourself, or thinking or talking about suicide. Kids who are cyberbullied are more likely to use alcohol and drugs, skip school, experience in-person bullying, be unwilling to attend school, receive poor grades, have low self-esteem, have more health problems. Some of the challenges with cyberbullying is the problem is it can happen 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and can reach kids absolutely anywhere. Cyberbullying messages and images can be posted anonymously and distributed very quickly. It can also be difficult and sometimes impossible to trace who posted them or started them. And deleting the inappropriate or harassing messages or texts or pictures is extremely difficult once they've been posted. How to prevent cyberbullying? Um, probably just be aware of what your kids are doing online as parents, um, establishing rules about technology use, and understanding what the school's rules are. How to report cyberbullying? Um, don't respond to what you've seen on your computer or whatever device you're getting it on. Don't forward the messages. Keep the evidence of the cyberbullying. Record the dates, times, and descriptions of instances when it has occurred. Save and print the screenshots or emails or messages, and then use this evidence to report it to um, web and cell phone service providers. You can also block the person who's cyberbullying. You can report it to online service providers, report it to law enforcement, or possibly report it to the school. Some of the statistics with cyberbullying, um, this just goes by gender, but you can see that when it comes to the male versus female, females seem to be cyberbullied more often, with about 40% of them saying that they have been cyberbullied, whereas with men, it's closer to 30%. Sexting. Um, goes along with cyberbullying because it, it talks about um, cyberbullying is the sending of uh, inappropriate pictures and when kids get involved with sexting this can lead into a cyberbullying situation very easily. Sexting or what you might call sex texting is when somebody sends or receives sexually explicit or suggestive images, messages, or videos through cell phones or the internet. This might be um, sending a nude or nearly nude photo or what <clears throat> selfies that might be that way. It could be a video that shows nudity or sexual acts or simulated sex. And it could also be text messages that propose sex or refer to, refer to sex acts. Consequences of sexting. Um, it's important that teens understand that the message or pictures or videos that they send um, through technology are never truly private or anonymous. They should understand that in seconds they can be out there for the whole world to see. They should also understand that if a compromising image of themselves goes public or gets sent to others, that they could be at, at risk for the cyberbullying or the humiliation or embarrassment or public ridicule. It could be damaging to the teen's self-image and possibly lead to depression other mental health issues. And in some states, a teen could actually face felony charges for texting explicit photos or even have to register as a sex offender because of it. 
how to prevent sexting. Um, we call this the WWGT or what would grandma think rule. Um, it's important to teach kids to follow that rule which would just mean if grandma shouldn't see it they shouldn't send it. Um, it's also very important for parents to be key in having talks with their kids. They need to talk to them about how pictures and videos and emails um, might seem temporary but they are permanent and it's important for parents to explain to their children that um, that once an image or message is sent it's no longer in their control and cannot be taken back and it can and likely will spread beyond the person who they meant to see it even if they thought it was only for that person the statistics on sexting um, about 20 percent of teens say that they're involved with this and if you notice of the 20 percent of teens girls are more likely to do the sexting than boys and I use three sources for this, StopBullying.gov, KidsHealth, and CyberBullying.org. Thank you for joining me.